Well, good morning, everyone. I just thought I'd take you and show you what camp looks like this time. A uh, little bit different because we're not in winter mode or <laughs> we kind of skipped through spring. It's kind of warm out now. So it got down to 67, I think, is what I've seen last night. But anyway, here's a view of it. And I'll pan over and show you Justin's. Or Cody Lundeen, whichever one you want to nickname him. Minus the uh, fact that I am very tender-footed. <laughs> He's been walking around camp without Minus shoes. Stop. So he, he brought his princess dog, which is a real pain in the butt. <laughs> See He's the already been peak, slopping peak. in the river this morning. <laughs> and. Uh, Justin set up a clothesline. I don't know if you can see it, but you can kind of see the bag hanging off of it and his glasses right there. But he had his shemog hanging up on there. All the way across there. Well, I thought that was a great idea. So, of course, in natural fashion, I copied him. But that's camp, guys. I'm supposed to have a major thunderstorm or with high possibility of tornadoes and stuff tonight. So we'll see how that goes. They said it's a high possibility of, I think, softball size hail. I can tell you that tarp's not going to handle that, so um, I'll let you know. So this morning I woke up with this entire area here covered in sow bugs. And I'll show you underneath my pack they're kind of thick right through here. You can see they were way thicker than this this morning when I woke up. <laughs> this is kind of why I like sleeping in a hammock. I mean these things aren't going to hurt you but these bugs come others. Darn old roly poly. <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. Well, I'm down at the river. I'm gonna wash my dishes again, and I don't want to bore you with the whole washing scene again. But anyway, I did want to share something new that I got um, for my pack. Nothing big or expensive, but in the paint department in the Walmart, you can get these. Uh, scrub pads I think they're for scraping or scrubbing paint but uh, they're twice this size I just cut it in half and uh, I'm gonna try it out to clean the Stanley this thing worked out pretty good last night I didn't film it or anything and as you can see I put a split ring on the top of this because it had that plastic tab here but, uh, I'll clean it let you know how it works. You can kind of see how dirty it is now. But uh, we'll get right back with you. So guys, I got it all cleaned up. Here it is. Cleaned it up pretty easy to be honest with you. That's pretty nice. Scrub pad, guys. Well, anyway, I'm going to fill this up with some water and maybe have some oatmeal. I don't know. We'll see, it's a really overcast day today. At least as of right now it is. But it's it's nice. Just beautiful. We'll get back with you. So we're out looking for wild edibles on this side of the river. And not too great of luck to be honest with you. It's mostly grassland. But uh, looks like we're gonna have to go to the other side. Check it out. So how's the wild edibles going? Not good, unless you want wild lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, hate to say it, but I think we're gonna have to cross, man. That's gonna suck because, well, destroyed my boots, and so now we gotta take off our shoes 
Maya, come on. Did I mention that dog was psycho? <laughs> a time or two. I don't know, it seems like all the good stuff's over there. Which is strange. Why would it be good over there and nothing over here? It's odd. So, you wanna do it? Yeah, let's find a good spot. Guess it doesn't matter, any spot's a good spot. <laughs> Well, we can go down there a little ways where it starts to narrow down. I don't know if the camera can see it, but it's pretty steep right here. And it'd be silly just risking a mechanical injury because we, uh, we're in a hurry when we have no reason to be in a hurry. I am not Bear grills. I go around. <laughs> I don't swim oh, under on. ice. I don't swim under icebergs. And I don't repel off cliffs if I don't have to. Jump off of here. I want to see it. <laughs> Do flying squirrel. Hey, you're rocking that GSO there, aren't you? I am, I am. <laughs> well, uh, Edward Birkin sent me this, as well as a work sharp to try out. And to be honest with you, I haven't even had an opportunity to try it yet. It's just been on my hip. But uh, I don't know, I've heard really good things about these knives. You know, it's got a decent edge on it. It's not the sharpest factory edge I've ever felt, but it's still got a decent edge on it. Feels pretty decent. So I'll be doing a video on it soon. Edward has a lot of trust in sending me his knife, right? I know. <laughs> I, I don't think I'd trust you with mine. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Edward. I'll take care of it, buddy. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so, guys, I'm rocking the ribs back here. If you haven't noticed yet, I just got it. This is my first outing with it. So far I like it. Um, this time I'm carrying my Crocs on it. Hey, easy dog. <laughs> but uh, I got them off of a piece of paracord clipped to my side here. So I can easily take them off because we're getting ready to cross the creek. So I'm going to change my shoes to the Crocs. And that water feels so good. So, so good. We'll get across to their side. So I wanted to show you guys how I'm hooking up my shoes to my pack. And <laughs> blooper. Okay, we'll <laughs> we'll keep that in there. But anyway, on the backs of the shoes, they got these little tags for pulling it up over your heel. Just gonna feed that through there on both shoes, like so. So I have it on this looped piece. Just feed one of the loops through and we got it hanging. And we're just going to clip that on the side here. So they just dangle on my side. And I thought I'd share that with you so you guys had an idea what you could do for yourself. So <laughs> Justin decided to take his boots off. It just ended up getting too deep for his hole that he ripped in his stuff. Got the dog over there. Water seems a little chillier this morning than it did yesterday when we were coming out here. Man, it's beautiful out here, guys. Just to be able to sit on the river here. Man, if you're hot, just to lay down in it. So, guys, this patch we found here for wild edibles is asparagus. Um, once you find a patch of it, you usually find patches just kind of here and there from it because it grows a lot of seeds off of it. And what we're looking for are new growth shoots. Um, these tops are kind of edible. <laughs> it starts to get really tough once they get too big. But uh, we're going to move on from one asparagus patch to the next and look to see if we can find some shoots for it. That'll be good eats. I brought some oil so we could uh, grill some up. But uh, no new shoots on this one. If I see some, I'll show you. So guys, here is a newer shoot that you can see that the dog just about ate. Maya, get out of there. <laughs> Easy. This is my food. You go eat something else. Go kill you a rabbit. But uh, here's a newer shoot that we'll be taking. And you can tell how old the plant is 
normally by how thick the stock is. And this one's not too thick, but we'll be taking this one. It does grow back after you cut it, so we're not worried about that. As long as we don't uproot it, we'll be good. But uh, we'll cut that stick in our bag, go see if we can find some more. So there's a lot of uh, prickly pear cactus here in Kansas, and this is one of them here. Uh, we're going to collect some of this today and uh, add it to our wild edibles. Of course, you got to clear all the spines like this one here and the hairs. And probably be grilling that, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, we'll get that and carry on. So we have another fairly large cactus and a lot of this new growth and stuff. And this stuff, I tasted it a second ago. I actually kind of like it. I think it's kind of got a fruity, fruity taste to it. It's kind of tart, but I like it. So here's another prime example of what we should be picking of asparagus. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and add it to my bag. Yeah, yum. This is good. This is literally good, just like it is, guys. It is so tender. I mean, you can see the flexibility in it on how tender it is. Uh, really good, just like it is. And even even these other stalks that have, have stemmed out, like you can see here, they're, they're pretty good, just like they are, too. There's a bug on there. But these taste really good. I mean, they're just... It tastes just like asparagus, I mean, obviously, but uh, there you go. We're going to add that to my bag. And what I'm using for a bag is the ribs pack came in this bag. And I just crumpled it up and stuck it inside my ribs pack. And uh, just going to stuff these things down inside of it. And I got it clipped to, to uh, the side of my bag. We've seen a bunch more just over the way here, and Justin's collected them up. So, I think we're going to have a good little bunch of them. You know the best part is as you're walking, grab the tops, chow down. They may not be as good as them shoots, but okay, it's good. So guys, something I wanted to share on this asparagus. You can even take some of these tops, the very top tops, but uh, what we're looking for when you're doing it is take it in your hand and kind of bend it. You can tell where it immediately starts to turn into a wet noodle basically. And at that point you can just snap it off. And all this here is good, good to uh, eat. You can see how flexible they are. They'll snap real easy if you bend them too much right at a certain breaking point. And these are full of juices so as they are they'll help hydrate you a little bit too. But with any ing ingestion of stuff, it will burn calories. I just wanted to show you guys, this is what a bedding area looks like for a deer. You can see the depression in the grass right here. You can see that they're staring at you and you don't even know it. Because here's a bank, and this bank is pretty steep. I don't know if you could show the elevation of it, but... There's Justin way off over there. He has his muck boots on, so he crossed early. And I didn't want to wear my uh, Crocs that far, so I'm kind of walking up the side of the bank here. And uh, then I'm going to choose to cross. So I don't have to wear them so long, because if you're wearing them in the sand, the sand gets between the Crocs, and uh, eventually you're going to get blisters. So thought I would share that with you guys. Maybe you'd like that. I'll share. I don't know what this tree is, to be honest with you, or this bush, whatever you want to call it. Hey, beautiful flowers. It just smells so good in here. Walking through the trees, it kind of holds that aroma in there. But, uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the other side. So, guys, I'm getting ready to change my shoes to cross the creek again. I'm on this embankment. It's pretty cool just to kind of look off and see everything in the distance. I've got a nice patch of woods behind me here. But I wanted to share something with you guys earlier when we were collecting the asparagus. 
I did one of the dumb things and then I laid my knife down instead of sheathing it. It's so easy to do if you're not really thinking about it and you get excited. But uh, I walked off and left it. And I definitely freaked out because I kind of like my woodsman trapper. So I had to walk back and get it and find it. And luckily I found it. But it starts to make you kind of think that you'd be glad that you had another knife on you, you know. Two is one and one is none. Because it's so easy to break or lose something. But yeah. Just a little thinking. I thought you guys might like a little quick view of the woods that are behind me here. I know I'm probably scanning too fast, but I ain't too good at this. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful and the smell. Oh, so refreshing. So guys, here's a tick. Definitely tick season. We've got to be watching for these things and you get them on you. Make them disappear. I'm laying in this grass is not a great idea. You're definitely going to get them that way. Um, but checked often, you know, so that way they don't have time to attach to you. Uh, I had a two of them attached to me so far this year. And uh, I do need to check myself again when we get back to camp, so. Um, just a thought. Summer's rolling in. Once all the green starts coming up, them ticks start getting thick. They've been pretty thick this year so far. Well, here we go. This time I tucked my shoelaces inside my shoe. Last time I let them hang out and they got wet, so. Something I'd add to that. Oh. Whoa. Don't want to lose the camera in there. Oh, there's some hen bit. Love this stuff. Flowers, at least. The whites of them are the best. The purple's okay. But if you just eat the white part, let me show you one. See? The white part on the end of it. Man, it's so sweet. Ah, it tastes like honey. So Justin's out hunting for protein right by camp here. And I don't want to say it, but I think he's looking for a snake. Oh man, please don't find one. So everybody knows we don't have venomous in this area, otherwise I'd be taking a little bit more precautions than what I am now. Nothing anyway. Yes! <laughs> I hate snakes, by the way. Well, I shouldn't say I hate them, I just don't like to be around them too much. And he loves them. Oh yes, absolutely love them. So I think I'm gonna try to grill up my cactus to see how that works out. I think I'm gonna go ahead and skin some of it. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but that'll help get rid of some of those little fine hairs too. nothing the fire won't fix. <laughs> kind of like peeling potato.
And putting this in the fire will help singe off anything that's left, you know. Little fine hairs. Those little fine hairs will get you, too. Right in the lip. You least expect it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this skewered up on my stick. I got me a stick here. I'm going to kind of just, I filled the bark off and just kind of heat it up a little bit. And then I'll just uh, skewer it. And we'll grill it up. And when it gets done, I'll let you see what it looks like and then we'll do a taste test. Well, Justin boiled up his cactus, and I thought I'd try to roast it a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to taste good or not, but it's a little hot still, so. Definitely has a chewy texture to it that way. It's okay, but it's not like asparagus. Not even close. Guess if you're starving. It has a real green flavor to it, like grass. <laughs> it's just like eating grass. Hmm, there's gotta be better stuff out there than this. So we've let the coals die down here and we got our nice uh, pan here. We're gonna roast up some asparagus that we collected today. Boy, did we collect. We could have collected more, that was the thing. Yeah, just there's no way. I mean, this is gonna be way more than enough for us. <sighs> We're gonna have to do this in actually in a few batches. Jeez. I know, right? Christmas. Like, Look at that. My wife is going to be ticked when she sees this. Why? She loves asparagus. Does she? I'm going to cut it in half here. That's fine. It doesn't fit the pan pretty good. Yeah, man. Grilled grilled asparagus and then grilled steak. Oh, man. Baked potato. Ain't nothing, not, you know, much better than that. There's, we're going to have a few different uh, sessions of cooking here. Cool. Well, because after this, we're going to go look for some protein. So. That's right. I thought I brought the uh, secret weapon, and uh, <laughs> I'm actually glad that I pulled that out because I actually had that in a uh, go bag in my wife's trunk. So I pulled it out thinking, well, you know, let's see how well it works in this type of situation. And, well, you guys will see in a little bit what I am talking about. <laughs> If we catch anything. Big mistake. So how do you want to do this? I was thinking about throwing a little bit of oil on the bottom of this. Oh, absolutely. Putting seed and salt on yep. it. We got a little bit of wood swirl in here. <laughs> Let me lick my spoon first here. He was trying to find some uh, garlic to throw in there, but no luck. I should have poured the oil over top of it. That would have been easier. Yeah, oh yeah.
Get that cooked up and then be right back. So, I've been talking on the phone with my wife, and I better hurry up and get in here and eat some of this asparagus before Greer Wolf eats it all. Yeah, you better. This, job. Yeah, this thing was over, this thing was completely full. There, there isn't even a third of it left. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he won't stop eating it. Oh my gosh. Good. Mm. Mm. That's good stuff. I know why you were eating it all now. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, guys. Bring you some seasoned salt. Mm. I think I was using canola oil if it matters. That is hearty delicious. The best part is, is we still have a whole bag full. Oh yeah. Check that out. Mmm, thing is full. And we know where there's plenty more asparagus plants at. We get to cook some more up. What? I'm gonna eat this up and cook some more up. Uh, trying to let the water cool as I boiled up from the river. Means it's so hot and muggy out and it ain't cooling very fast. And I hate drinking hot water when it's hot out. So did you not uh is that on? Cool. So, <laughs> Justin's uh getting ready. We're getting ready to leave guys. You can see he's got his boots off, we're gonna cross the creek. He did get a hole in his boots, so I don't know if you, you know, it kind of sounded like a thunderstorm there for a second. That might be a jet. But uh, on a serious note, we got notified by Justin's wife about impending weather that's coming in. And it looks like a pretty high chance of tornadoes and high chance of softball size hail. So it's pretty stupid to stick around out here when you got that kind of weather coming around. It's just nonsense, especially when you got family. Uh, you got to think about them. It's not just you. So we're going to go ahead and hike out while we can. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. See you later.